Hey, you know what you can make from crickets? You can make cookie crisps. These are made out of cricket flour. You can make, I don't know why you would want to, but this is critter bitters. This is for your alcohol bitters. You know, you make a old, yeah, fashioned, old fashioned with bitters. We got this supplies is, back this here This is that. a pure cricket tincture. Crickets are all the rage right now. On the, <laughs> on the line right now, the guys who make this, this is cricket flour and delicious roasted crickets. And, and look at this, Toaster, really, <laughs> he is lining Toaster up. really wants some. On the line right now from Tiny Farms, it's Andrew Brentano. He's the founder and chief operating officer. Tiny Farms is using data-driven design to build sustainable cricket farms for use in food. Hey, Andrew. Hey, how's it going? So tell me how you got involved in cricket production. <laughs> uh, it's a, that's a good question that we get asked a lot. Um, a few years ago, we were looking at uh, the food system, kind yeah. of trying to think about where's our food come from, trying to understand, you know, what's going on here, and asked a few questions to ourselves. Where are all the resources being used? What's really uh, the most, you know, biggest piece of the resources being used to make our food? Um, are those resources being used efficiently? Um, are they being used in a resilient way? And the answer to those were, it's all going to meet, and it's not very efficient, and it's not very resilient to changes, you know, in the environment uh, that can affect food production. And so then we thought, well, let's look at the alternatives. Let's see what's out there. And we found that there was all this uh, kind of historical practice of eating insects and all the scientific uh, literature on why it's a good idea, why they're incredibly healthy, why they're really efficient. We said, let's uh, let's give this a go. I remember seeing an interview with uh, Elon Musk's brother. I can't remember his name, but he, he, he was talking about how the next big, you know, opportunity in investing mm -hmm. in the kind of thing you do, Kevin, is food. That the, the reinventing how we make and eat and distribute food is going to be everything from from these you know meatless burgers. Have you tried that one? That's all the rage. Everybody right now? did the Impossible, the Impossible burger. burger. I didn't get yeah. to have one, but everybody was raving about it. You had one, Anthony, right? He said it was good, right? It bleeds. Yeah, I don't. Mm. That's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what people need. That's what they want, right? They want to think they're eating meat. Right. So this is a hot area right now. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at investments in this? Yeah, in this actually, area? we had we had when I was at Google Ventures, we had them come in. Several companies come in and pitch us um, different Cir startups. Cirque around is, this. is big into some, one of these. I know. Yeah, uh, hamburger thing. Never crickets though. This is this is a new well, one. Why crickets, a Andrew? Tell me why crickets are a good choice. Uh, so. When we were trying to decide, we knew we wanted to look at insects and see how we could get this into the food system. Crickets, it turns out, are pretty acceptable to people out in general. So you're there, you have a uh, cricket in front of you. They're not scary uh, when you try them. They've got a very good flavor. Uh, uh, they do look like bugs. How are they? Uh, how they, are these they're crickets prepared? They're not not scary though. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know, don't cultures all over the world eat crickets and grubs and other critters. Yeah. yeah. So people think there's probably about 2 billion people on the planet eating bugs daily. Yeah. I mean, they're just, it's what you're used to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the cricket flower is very approachable. I mean, that's, how, right, how, that's pretty. That's ground up? That's just that's pulverized? Just dehydrated whole crickets ground into a powder. And can so, you use this uh, as, as, as a regular flour in baking and things? You'd use it um, like you'd use a nut meal, like flax meal. It, it's very high in protein. It doesn't have the kind of gluten binding properties that white flour has. Right. So, if you, so you couldn't ra raise the bread. It wouldn't be. Right. Yeah. Now, right. I've, I've seen some people eat cricket flour and use it for the protein. Um, mm -hmm. So let's just say I, I took a couple tablespoons here of this cricket flour. What, what mm -hmm. are we talking protein wise? Like uh, how many grams? So it's about 60% protein by weight. Let's say you ate 100 grams, you'd get 60 grams of protein. Wow. That's pretty good. If you're working out, hitting the gym, a little protein, a little cricket protein. I just bought a Nintendo <laughs> Switch. I'm sorry. I distracted. <laughs> Let, Go see. ahead. Go ahead. Let's see you. Go ahead. Toaster. Oh, no. I know the dog's going to well, eat let's it. Let's just sit. High five. Dance. He... Oh, wow. Dance one more time. Yeah, he's going to say, that's not a treat, Dad. That's a cricket. What is he? Oh, uh, he spit it out. It's got chili lime on it. Oh, he, he won't, he like won't eat it. He chili. won't eat it. <laughs> chili. Okay, but watch. What? These are delicious. Mmm. They're so good. Come on, Kevin. You're gonna, it's really all right, good. All right, let me try a little. You were, if you were watching TV, you were watching a football game, 
<laughs> we think that the bar stacked is perfect for this. They're actually not bad at you all. Know, it reminds me of pork rinds a little bit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh. There's a weird okay. There's Andrew, a little. There's, there's a, little a weird after thing coming in the end. <laughs> Did they keep them refrigerated? Yes. For you? Did you keep them refrigerated? Yeah. Are we gonna get food poisoning here? Did someone not refrigerate these? You have to keep. Do they have high fat? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do they have high fat content. So crickets uh, have a reasonably high fat content. It's mostly like omega three, long chain, good stuff. unsaturated acid. Okay. So it's really good for you, but it does go rancid if you don't keep it refrigerated. Okay. After you've after you've cooked it. Because that's what has a lot of fat. In it. And then uh, how about protein? Is he? I mean, traditionally bugs are good for protein, right? Yeah, like the uh, powder. Those are. Since they're fried, actually, they're going to be a little lower percentage-wise, maybe 50% okay. by weight protein, but still wow, you're 50 basically that's eating still high. protein. Wow, that's more than steak. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. Wow. So how many uh, crickets do you slaughter per, per day? <laughs> and how do you slaughter them? Do <laughs> yeah, how do you slaughter? Like hit them on the head with, <laughs> with the hammer? <laughs> so when you think of like... Uh, Beekeepers, you know how they have that can of smoke that they yeah. use to calm down the bees? Yeah. What's happening is all insects um, are anesthetized by CO2. So we use a little CO2, we knock them out. Once they're asleep, we put them in a freezer and they just never wake up. That's a good way to do it. I thought you were frying them or something, but that, I guess no, that comes later. No, these are fried, that comes but later. you kill them first, yeah. 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 Um, how, how, okay, so how much uh, food do they eat? In other words, you know, you talk a lot of times about cows and how much water it takes mm -hmm. for one pound of steak and how much feed it takes, and it's really completely upside down. Mm -hmm. You know, you're really eating way mm -hmm. too high in the food chain. Is this, would you call this high in the food chain or low in the food chain? What do they need to make a pound of crickets? Exactly. It's, uh, they call it the trophic scale. It's how high up and down you are. And so crickets are quite low. You need about two pounds of feed to get one pound of cricket, whereas you're oh, looking at wow. anywhere from eight to 25 pounds of feed for a cow. Two pounds for one pound, so it's a two to one. What type of feed are you, is it just a... Carrots, it looks like. Is it carrots? Yeah, so the, uh, our adult crickets get vegetables to give them moisture um, because they will lay eggs in any other form of water we give them. Um, the uh, normal crickets just get water. And the feed, because these are grown for food, is very similar to chicken feed. It's vegetarian, non-GMO, uh, pesticide-free, uh, grain-based feed. It's awesome. So, how expensive is it to make a, a I, obviously a cricket? Nobody makes a cricket. Look at that's the little baby crickets. They're yeah. like little like <laughs> price per cricket. <laughs> what's, what's the cost yes. per pound? These I guess. days, uh, it costs a couple <coughs> dollars a pound to produce uh, fresh crickets. That's, that's going to go down a lot as we are able to increase the scale get economies of scale on inputs and processing, et cetera. So the biggest problem you have, by the way, this is this is a, a startup. You came out of an accelerator called Food System 6. That's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a food startup? Yeah. So we've been around for a couple of years. Uh, we just went through Food System 6, uh, which is a brand new food system focused accelerator. We were in their guinea pig batch. Love um, it. It was, it was cool because a few years ago, there was really no ecosystem for food tech or agriculture startups. Uh, you know, if you were making an app for anything, there's a roadmap, you know, there's an investment pathway. People understand how it's going to scale. People have started to realize, hey, everyone eats. This is a huge market. This is a great opportunity. There's also a lot of problems and inefficiencies in the supply chain for food, so it's you know we can bring some innovation in there, and uh, and now we're seeing uh, this food system six uh, big banks like Rabobank, which is a duck, Dutch bank that invests in food and agriculture, uh, starting accelerator programs. The whole ecosystem is starting to evolve very quickly. Wait a minute, one of them's escaped. Wait, I gotta get that one. Ah! Okay, that's good. I got it. <laughs> and you've open sourced this entire thing to share with other people. That's I love that. Tell us about that. So we have two uh, kind of two sides of our business. We have our proprietary large scale uh, cricket farm system, and then we have an open source project we started a couple of years ago. Open bug farm. Really, I love it. And this is for more of your home grower, or you want to think about starting your own business, but you want to learn more about it. We've got the bulk of this is a forum where we've got people all over the world sharing information, answering each other's questions. We contribute information. 
Uh, we've got some designs for uh, bealworm farming kits. People have shared their home setups and small commercial setups for cricket farming, snail farming, all sorts of insects. Uh, if you know, if you're interested in this, this is a great resource to come and just absorb a huge amount of information that's collected there. So, so I've obviously heard of crickets a, a bunch now. It's becoming a pretty popular thing. Who's your biggest competitor in terms of insects? <laughs> like, what what's number two? Are like mealworms, ants, ants, roaches? So, in terms of production, mealworms are probably next in line. Uh, they're very easy to grow and pretty inexpensive. They taste good uh, oh, when you cute. toast them. They're kind of like popcorn. Oh. Uh, but crickets are kind of going to be our gateway bug. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there, yeah, though, these, I mean, especially to eat them. with the whole cricket, there's, uh, I think you have a little bit of a cultural, you know, hurdle to get over, right? We mostly have the whole crickets kind of for fun. You know, oh, okay. people, we'll take them to tasting events. We will sell them to people if they want them. Uh, but the cricket powder is really where this is going to get into the Western these, market. These could really grow on me. I'm starting to really, li I'm starting to really like them. Yeah, they're yeah. Good. I know you have been, like, even when the camera's been shut off, you're still eating them, mm -hmm. which is I love impressive. <laughs> now, I feel so bad. Wait a minute. I really feel bad because Toaster didn't like them. And I think it's because it's chili lime. Yeah, that's right. He so we like got a bark guy. box here. some of the... Uh, the powder there. You think yeah, you like the powder? Pick a, pick oh, a treat, because yeah, I, mean, I feel bad, because love... you made Toaster dance and do tricks, and he didn't get a treat, Oh, and he's, he's really thinking that he wants some crickets. The bone you... here would be huge. Okay, good. So you think he'd like the flour? Well, yeah, flour doesn't have the chili food. lime. Right. Oh, yeah, the flour doesn't... Mm. Are you trying the flour now, too? Yeah, I think you... <laughs> you're, a, you're addicted to this stuff. It's actually good. The flour, you're right. I think the flavor, the chili lime... Was the flavor you were tasting? Here, have some flour. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, I got now. I got bone bits all over my hands. Um, here, uh, toaster. toaster. Hey, go, have some flour. Go over here. See if he likes that. Oh yeah. See. Oh look. Oh. Did he lick it? Oh yeah. Oh, he loves it. I think it was the chili lime. Yeah, it was the chili lime. Yeah. Okay. Here's yeah, a bone. Give for him a bone. Bud. He'll be happy. This yeah, is very exciting, go. Andrew. So at what stage are you? Are you your early stage startup at this point, or are you actually starting to do big production? Yeah, so uh, where I'm sitting right now is our R&D pilot farm. Uh, we're in a small warehouse space. Uh, we've been working for the last year getting the core production system really running smoothly, uh, efficiently getting all the you know processes in line. Our next step that hopefully we'll be able to break ground on later this year is a full commercial scale farm. Uh, that would be producing. You How know, what, is it acres? How big is a bug farm? In you know, thousands to tens of thousands of square feet, wow. as opposed to acres. And you would do that? Uh, do they need light, sunlight? You would do that in a in a warehouse, or? Yeah, they need just you know a little bit of light for their normal cycle, but that right. can be any overhead light. Artificial, LEDs. okay. Yes. Wow. I'm. This, I mean, look at this. Is this is. We need to solve the, the world food crisis. Absolutely. There are people starving. This And this is a perfectly high protein, delicious treat. I love this idea. And it's a lot more economical than growing wheat, right? What is the what is that uh, scale you were talking about? Uh, the trophic scale? Trophic the scale conversion? For, for wheat, yeah. Well, so wheat is uh, at the bottom. So it's just one to one. It's you really know, it's cheap. Sun. Okay, so we, yeah. why would you use this for flour if it's if it's more expensive? So you'd use it instead of eating other animal proteins. Oh, because uh, you need animal protein. Yeah. Got it. So you yeah. get the so animal you've got protein. All the good amino acids. You've got your. Is it a complete? An is it a complete protein? Absolutely. Yeah, and it's got uh, animal-only amino acids like lysine and taurine that are hard to get from plant sources. Okay. And it's probably low glycemic as well, so you're not going to get a. Oh, big sure. Depth. It's all protein, right? There's no sugar in this. Yeah. No. Yeah. In fact, there's even a little fiber. The exoskeleton is chitin. It digests <laughs> like fiber. The exoskeleton, that's what I was tasting. Mm, yeah. It's crunchy and delicious. Yeah. Um, could I live on this? <laughs> yeah. I, this is a, you, com you this is a complete protein. Too. All right, well, yeah. you want some vegetables, a little broccoli on the side. But yeah, this could absolutely. be my, this could substitute for meat in a normal diet. Absolutely. I'm very You're making the switch? How about, yeah, maybe. It's not exactly vegetarian. I mean, that's still an animal. That you're eating, it's just a small animal. With yeah, what an would that be? It's not pescatarian. <laughs> it's bugatarian. It's like cricketarian. Cricketarian. Sure. Exo. I, I can't wait to go to a party and say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm cricketarian." Cricketarian. Do you have anything made of crickets? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, antiquarian. 
Ent Entomology. Entitarian. Entitarian. I think you're right. I think that's it. Andrew, I'm very excited. Where is Tiny Farm located? We're in uh, San Leandro, so we're just oh, south just of Oakland. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm being told there are other flavors besides chili lime. What other flavors? Uh, we can put any flavor you like on there. We can do <laughs> salt, barbecue, you know, sriracha, whatever you want. This is not want. the product, though. I wish it were, because you know what? Yeah. This we're, is good. we're looking at productizing that. I would. Yes. They're yeah. fabulous. What do, you, what do you fry them in? Uh, right now, canola oil. Mm. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm not doing any more. <laughs> I would do the flour. I, I would do the flour. I do do. The, I, I think it's the neutral. Flour doesn't it's have fine. any flavor really at all. It tastes almost. It's rich. It's nice. And look at Toaster loves the flour. Look at that. He does that's, love the that's flour. That's like meat for him. That's good. He loves that. He's going for the other finger. <laughs> he wants it all. He loves it. Hey, it's great to talk to you, Andrew. Congratulations. I think this is a great idea, great startup. I wish you all the best. Thank you. It was and fun talking to you guys. Thanks for the crickets. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Wow. Enjoy them. Take care.